put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. In the shadow of the mountain, or I'm going to try not to butcher this, Kakat Alangui. And for those who do speak Greenlandic, don't get your hopes up. That's one of the last times I'm going to say any Greenlandic. Six Greenlandic youths are going to a cabin in the Greenlandic wilderness to celebrate the graduation of four of them. And the you know the remaining two are the younger brother of one of them and the you know female friend of another. Or is it the same? Anyway, yeah. And they start seeing signs of a territorial avenging spirit of a deceased hermit that has been rejected from society, what their ancestors would call a krevitok. And that word means the one who turned away from society. You know, in in Danish, it can be referred to as a fjellgänger, which basically translates to mountain walker, and that is what I'm going to be calling it in these videos. And I will go into detail about the legend itself in the thoughts video. Now, this movie is 117 minutes long, or 121 and a half minutes if you do count the end credits, and it is maybe half an hour longer than it should be, but I'll get more into that. Now, you might be wondering, you know, why would why would young people today go to Greenland? And, you know, one reason is the, you know, they are from there. And, of course, about half of all teen slashers have them in an isolated, remote area. It's a pretty nice cabin. And, you know, it Greenland has some incredibly beautiful nature. Of course, it does get insanely cold and windy. It is not weather you would want to help someone find their missing kids and now the characters are the they're, they're yeah starting with there's the the couple of Ivalu who's a very loving character and the you know at times kind of practical joker Mika the you know her younger brother the shy Pitak and the and, and Ula, who has a crush on Pitak, and who's, she's a very sweet character. She's the one who knows the most about this legend. There is Kistat, who's very decisive and, you know, assertive. And... Kisiak, who wants to, you know, basically pick pick her up, and he's he can be kind of obnoxious, but you know, without without going so far that he loses our sympathy. You know, he's not an ass. He's not like a jock or a Kepern. Kep. He's not a bicep kisser, and it also it helps that. The others do kind of call him out on it. If if he's being annoying, they say, "Dude, you're being annoying." There's this bit where, you know, he's he's talking a lot, and so and Kistat is like, "Do you ever stop talking?" And you know, she gets him to, you know, she yeah, basically, she she wages him that he can't spend five minutes without talking. I'm not going to give away exactly 
what happens there. But yeah, you know, the others don't just let it happen. And and it really has very nicely done character dynamics. Now I'm gonna dive into the notes I took while watching it. The music is unbelievably tense and foreboding at times. In in like the first yeah, in, in the opening, I, I, you know, it's been a while since, I'll, I'll get into when I last watched this, but I had forgotten the, the opening, the, the first shots you see by themselves aren't inherently terrifying, but the score is just so nerve-wracking, and yeah, just in, in the opening, maybe 10, 15 minutes, I was like, it's not going to be this intense throughout, is it? Because that's like two hours of just that. That would be insane. I mean, there, there are horror movies out there that are just completely, you know, this isn't, yeah, this, this doesn't go for that. But just, yeah, the opening, like, you know, some horror movies, you put them on and the, the opening is kind of, yeah, okay, you know, whatever. But this, it just from the from the first seconds, it's just, this is a horror movie. You are going to be terrified watching this. And I don't know if, if it's intentional, but there is, you know, if, if, if this was a movie that came out of, like, Hollywood or something, I would be certain... This is intentional product placement. I'm not entirely sure of it. I it could help explain, you know. I I don't know exactly how the the funding for this worked, but yeah, I could understand. You know, it's got like Coca Cola, Tubo, which is Danish brand of beer. I forget if I said it. I am Danish, hence yeah. And the I think there's at least one more. Yeah, at at one point there's like this this boat that they're using to travel and it's the camera you know in in plain sight is the name of what I assume is the brand because the placement yeah and I don't know if this is just like they didn't really think too much about it or if it is like intentional product placement but especially with the coke it's like you know it's it's these two hunters that are out enjoying nature and in, in Greenland, and it's, of course, ridiculously cold. And one of them, you know, grabs a cola, you know, unscrews the, the you know, starts drinking it. And, and all this time, you know, when he's, like, yeah, it, it, it might be intentional because he's, like, he's not covering up the, the logo with his gloves, you know, and then he starts drinking. And then he realizes the other one's drinking something also, and two drinking something too and it's like you know from out, out of this like thermos thermos it's been a long time since I had to use that word in English and the the guy's like is what you're drinking hot mm -hmm. then why am I drinking cola you know and the other hey you're the one who picked up the cola why did you pack the cola you know so yeah I it it might be, although it doesn't necessarily put. Yeah, with, without going into it, the these brands may not necessarily be entirely happy with what the, you know, what what happens to their product or what it's used in connection with. Other, yeah, stuff like that. And the. There's this kind of funny, the, the, basically, almost every single character in this is a youth, you know, a teenager or just barely reached adulthood, which is also, you know, for people who watch this and are like, are they all of age? Should they be drinking? They do. It, a lot of us Danes do with yeah, it's it's kind of a thing. It's it's you know, don't worry about it. It's not some big yeah, 
there there's there's a lot of of drinking in in yeah now as such yeah they they you know they talk about stuff that young people talk about and in in the opening there's like you know these these two hunters are like you know one of them's like you hooked up last night didn't you and the other's nah, just, you did i i saw you with her you, one of the things he says is you looked like you were eating her <laughs> So yeah, it was you know, and and finally it's like yeah, I did. You did too, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. And 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 he's like, oh yeah, bent her over and you know, gave her a good ride, and that's how you do it, you know. And then a little bit after, he's like, that didn't really happen. No, I fell asleep. I drank. I drank too much. And the. As a Dane, you know, I, I I don't speak Greenlandic. I know a few words. But, yeah, as a Dane, I do speak Danish. And as you might know, there's something of a connection between Denmark and Greenland. I'm, I'm not going to go into the history there, but there, there are some words where, you know, similar to how we Danes... You know, we didn't come up with a new word for for computer. You know, that's that's a thing that we got from English speaking countries, so we just use the same word. You know. Yeah, some some Greenlandic you know, they they use some words directly from Danish. There's yeah, the the two hunters are talking about something one of them read in like what's it called? Science Illustrated, which it's called almost the in, in Danish it's illustrated videnskab. So they just they reversed it and yeah, our word for science is a little different. Anyway. And, and yeah, he's he's saying, you know, in Greenlandic, I read it in and then he just goes illustrated videnskab and moves on. To, which, you know Yeah, if a Greenlandic person reads it, it's probably in Danish. I, I could imagine that they don't translate you know, obviously they're translating into, you know, into Danish. We are, what, five, five and a half million people, you know. And some of us are very reluctant to learn English for some reason. But, you know, translating into Greenlandic, there might not be enough readers, you know, for, for it to make sense to do that. So, yeah. And the, the, when the, when these six youths are, you know, going to Greenland, you know, it's, they, they, they need help getting there. So the uncle of the, of the two siblings is the one who takes them over in what I believe is his own boat. It, yeah, it, it seems he's, he's very comfortable around it, certainly. And you know the the younger brother is the shy one he's the only he's the odd one out everybody else knows each other he's there because his sister is there and he even says my parents told my sister that she couldn't go unless i went too and he even says right out they wanted to be able to have sex without us being there. And, you know, and the English like, they really said, no, 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 but I could tell, you know. And, yeah, that's a pretty realistic, you know, family dynamic right there. And and the uncle, and that's a, that's a thing that's, that's probably going to throw people off who don't know anyone from Greenland and who don't really know the culture. The uncle makes these really... You know, these jokes that are like really adult and really black comedy and such. And just, yeah, they, you know, when you live in such an extreme environment, you you get more comfortable with talking about things that, you you know, we, we who, grew, who grew up in like very Christian, you know, my family was not Christian, but, you know, I've... You know, most of the people I know have some kind of, and and it's not like we're actively not Christian as such. You know, and yeah, Denmark is a Christian country. Growing up with a Christian family is like, oh, let's not talk about sex and ooh, death. Let's not talk. You know, Greenlandic is 
I could walk outside and die any minute. You know, if if I don't talk about death, I'm gonna. I'm not going to be able to calm down at all. I have to release this tension, and sex is also just so. So, so yeah. The the uncle is like, you know, here, take these condoms. And again, I'm not entirely certain this kid is even of age, though. But you know, take these condoms. And he's like, ah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have sex. It's not. You, know, you want kids? Syphilis? <laughs> It's like, there aren't even any, or any girls here. Those aren't girls because, like, you know, like I said, it's like, you know, it's it's six people and yeah, three of them are girls. So it's, you know, and, you know, and, and so, okay, he takes the condoms and then the, 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 the uncle hands him this, I guess it's technically not a Swiss army. And anyway, yeah, you know, a, a, yeah, basically that kind of thing. It's, it's, you know, and, you know, he, he, Pidak takes it and he's like, what are you, what am I supposed to do with this? If Akisiak gets too, you know, messed up, you're in nature, you're going to need it. You know, just, yeah, it's just. And I can I can understand if some people found that, you know, I, I don't know I don't know how many are people are going to watch this outside of you know real and maybe some Danes but I really hope more do because it's I'm gonna get more into it but it's a really amazing movie. Now the. There are, of course, some fake-out scares, but honestly, I'm not going to go into how many, but some of them do actually lead to real scares. It's not the kind of thing where it's just, oh, we, we had to have a scare, but we, didn't, we couldn't have anything of consequence because we need more time to pass before the plot really starts. No, something, you know, you think, oh, uh, okay, it was just a fake-out, and there is the real scare which is also you know that is something that you know really competent horror movies do and probably some that aren't so competent now the 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 coat that the 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 mountain walker wears you know it it basically it covers his face even though it's not you know he's not really wearing a mask but he's got the hood up and where you would expect to be able to see his face it's just like black and yeah like I, I believe Rod Hilton himself put in the abridged script of urban legend Kenny is killing people it, it's yeah but you know it is an effective, yeah, a lot of the really effective, like, atmosphere building and scares comes from the, the sound work. It's, yeah, just really amazing. Like, there are times where you'll hear something that sounds wrong. That really shouldn't, that's... That's not a right sound, and you know, in in so many slashers, you have the you know the the kids go out and investigate a strange sound. In this, you're like, okay, yeah, find out what that sound was. That that really, yeah. Now. There are more notes on the paper, but they're all for the thoughts video. Now, part of the reason that I 
appreciate as much as I do of this is because the first time I watched it, I did so with my father. And we talked a lot about what we were seeing. And he spent six years in Greenland, you know, studying eschatology. So he knows this stuff. And he's, he's always been really fascinated with Greenland, went there a number of times. And yeah, the first time we, the first, yeah, the first time I watched it and the first time he and I watched it together, he's watched it before, was in April of 2014. And in, in each case where, you know, he and or I have watched it, it's because that he borrowed it from a friend from Greenland. So, yeah, but this does actually have a proper DVD release with a few DVD extras even, although unfortunately they're, they're in Greenlandic. There's no, there are no subtitles. The, the movie itself has subtitles in Danish and English, but yeah, which is also why, I mean, you, yeah, you could watch, as, as long as you speak English, you can watch this and follow it. There's, you know, there are going to be a few things that might throw you off a little bit, but, yeah. Basically, this is a healthy marriage between a modern horror film and sort of the, this kind of historical, you know, mid, the, the philosophies of West, Western, West Greenland with the, you know, the mountain walker himself is wearing this, basically all of his clothes are made from seal skin, which is very much, you know, that's not something you see people in today. So it's, it's, it's a distinct look, which is, you know, this, well, actually, I suppose, yeah, that, you know, I was, I was going to say that, you know, dis distinct look, that's what the American horror movie icons have. You know, everybody knows what Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, you know, Michael Myers, what they look like. And I was going to say this isn't a horror icon, but I mean, it's, it is one of the, the really feared legend, you know, legendary beings from West Greenland lore. So, yeah, it, it really fits. And technically, it's not in the legend that, well, when you see the mountain walker, he will be wearing seal skin. That's something that the, the filmmakers came up with. And what I'm saying is it really fits. Because this, it yeah, there's... Basically, when you're watching a slasher movie, there shouldn't be any point where you see several characters in a scene and you're not sure you you can't recognize if if you can see them clearly if you can see who's who you should be able to easily recognize the killer that's that's part of the idea you know the it's it's not just a sound that you hear that you don't know the source of it's not just a you know a, a shadow or something no when you see and and you can and you can tell what you're looking at. You should be able to tell, okay, that's definitely the killer. And that's very much the case. And he also uses a knife. I don't know the exact kind, but it is, you know, basically the kind of thing that a, a, a hunter in Greenland would be using. You know, it's not some fancy modern knife or anything. You know, you can clearly see the, the way it's, you know, and, and again, if you if you don't know them from looking at, I, I don't know, like I said, I don't know exactly what kind it is, but from looking at it, yeah, that's definitely a knife that someone made who lives in Greenland, who doesn't have access to, like, modern stuff. It is clearly made by hand, you know, and yeah, that is, you know, when, when you have this idea that is specifically from it's it's a it's an old idea i'm i'm going to get into you know in, in the thoughts well yeah just briefly you know we don't know if it's hundreds 
hundreds of years old or thousands of years old. Eskimo culture is, you know, 4,000 years old. It is entirely possible that the mountain walker is almost as old as that, and as such, it's pretty important to tell to, to, to communicate to youths who, you know, almost every character in the movie is a youth, but really the only character who isn't is the uncle. And, you know, so the characters themselves and most of the, you know, the audience is basically fellow youths, you know. Although, I'm not, sh I, you know, any, anyone from Greenland who's like, well, you know, let's get into stereotypes, but yeah, the, the stereotypical Greenland, Greenlandic individual, if they're at all into movies, you know, some, some of them, you know, I mean, if, yeah, if they are, they're probably going to enjoy this. They, they, like I said, regardless of age, they tend to be, you know, to, to be able to laugh at, you know, sex jokes and, you know, stuff, yeah, you know, really, really dark comedy jokes and that kind of thing. But, yeah, it's... And the... I, I guess I should briefly get into, you know, seal skin. The, the... Yeah, some, some people are gonna you know, hear seal skin think, you know, it doesn't have a huge amount to do with this movie, but if you're considering watching this and you're like, I don't want to watch something that, you know, like, yeah, from, from a country that, you know, or yeah, some something that's going to keep reminding me that they, you know, skin seals. They do eat the meat. It's one of a few really important exports, and their level of respect for the animals that they hunt. It's it's really difficult to think of anything that that it's it's an extreme level of respect. And the you know, I, I understand like people who people who don't know Green, Greenlandic culture and who would think well you know they're gonna hunt them into extinction or they're gonna or you know do they are are they merciful about they they wouldn't they wouldn't dream of hunting something into extinction they treat them they're they're extremely careful and you know merciful with the when they kill some you know when once they've wounded something they make sure to kill it as soon after so that it doesn't suffer now the yeah it's it's of course pretty rare you know with this a, a movie from greenland but i i think they made a really smart choice in making it a slasher because a slasher, regardless of what country it's from, you can basically sell anywhere, as long as, you know, like it's got English subtitles. So, yeah. You know, I know of at least one Norwegian slasher movie, 22, I think it's called. I've watched it years ago. I remember almost nothing about it, but apparently it's absolutely terrible. There, I know of at least two Danish ones that are made from, you know, I suppose, yeah, that, that are written by Dennis Jürgensen, one of my all-time favorite authors, and not just of horror and science fiction, a Danish author, obviously, since they're Danish, who also wrote these novels out of the, the, the script for the film, basically, and, you know, Basically, the, the novel came out a little bit after the, the movie, and there are some things that work better in print that, you know, I...
I suppose I, sh I sh I'm not going to give that away, but you know, maybe there will be some more backstory in the novel, and the the film will be more direct, or you know, they'll they'll you know, there are there are changes, but yeah, I I've enjoyed everything I've read by Dennis Jorgensen, and I it's been a while since I picked any of his up, but when I, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I made sure to read everything by him. There there are probably a few from back then that I didn't get to, but I tried to read everything by him at all. And yeah, just, he's he's done really, you know, kind of Philip K. Dick stuff. There are, he's he's done zombie stories that are right that, that would fit right in with you know the the Romero trilogy of the dead so yeah anyway the the two movies are final hours and backstab and backstab I'm not going to get into because it's 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 serviceable it's 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 trying to be kind of sort of this meta or ironic take on Slashers. Basically, the idea is a bunch of youths go into this like old abandoned house, and each of them has like this toy knife, and they're playing a game where they're supposed to go and stab each other, and then there's an actual killer. You know, it's it's cute, whatever. It it's not a terrible concept. It just doesn't turn out to be that amazing of a film, and the, the book isn't that much better but he wrote it well it's it's mainly that as a movie it's just it's it's not that amazing but final hours is really amazing both book and film and basically i'm i'm going to the the danish title for it is actually sister team which you can translate into you know the the final hours that someone is alive but it also means the last you know class of the day i guess in school and the and it does have to do with school so that double meaning is very intentional and it is this thing of just a bunch of students that seem you know they're they're not necessarily you know some of them don't know that much about each other but yet yeah, excuse me it almost seems like you know picked out of a hat or something they're all asked to stay after class and so they you know they they do so and then they're they're trapped in this school and it's it's kind of the Silent Hill thing where it's the familiar that's just barely perverted. You know, there's something wrong, but it's not like it's basically the you know this this big school is empty and it's getting dark and like they don't know why they're there. They don't know who locked them there or why and that by itself can be incredibly scary. You know, you don't have to go very far away from the norm before it gets incredibly scary. You just have to twist it the right way. And yeah, it, it does an amazing job. And the I really shouldn't go too much more into detail. I'm I might review that movie someday. It really there there are some things that in the movie are you know that there are better in the book but the movie is still really really well done but the yeah the the you know everything about this movie is you know native greenlandic you know the they behave like greenlandic youths the the dialogue is you know as i've already gone into very much of that every song on the score like there there are a few songs with lyrics and they're all in Greenlandic you know and just yeah and everyone on the crew is like you know there is this 
really solid Danish movie that is also about Greenland, but and and it's it's it really gets Greenlandic culture really well. But that one is made by Danes and in Danish. And I, as, as much as I love that film as well, I have a lot of respect for this being completely, you know, yeah, the, the you know, first and foremost, by, you know, f for Greenlandic youth and entirely by Greenlandic people. The Danish movie is actually called Kvitok and was directed by Erik Berling, who did the Olsen gang movies as well. Now, you can go completely blind into this movie. You don't have to know anything about Greenland. If, if you go into this movie not knowing that Greenland is a country, you're still going to be fine. You're going to understand. You know, you're not going to be lost while watching the movie. It's, yeah. It's, you know, it, it follows the overall plot structure and visual shorthand and such of Hollywood. It... Yeah, it, it works as a Hollywood slasher. You know, the if if you ignore the language spoken, yeah, you know, there there are things in this that that you you know you see and if you know Hollywood movies, you're like, oh that's that's a bad thing or that's a good thing, you know. And the it's it's Incredibly well produced. The the acting is really amazing. One actor in particular is asked to do a lot and does incredibly well. It's it feels like a fully professional movie and and really you know yeah as far as I can tell these are actually actually I yeah I'm not one hundred percent but it's not you know this is not like you know. A bunch of friends just went out and filmed, and oh, it went well. No, they they knew what they were doing. You know, this is better than most recent slashers I've watched, and honestly, better than a lot of the the older ones. You know, really, when when you go back and watch, you know, the the eighties were when slashers were really a big thing, and a lot of them they they have passion. And or there are some elements that are really strong, but really, at the end of the day, they're not necessarily the most well-made movies. There are, there are, of course, exceptions. You know, the original Halloween, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, but by and large, they're just, they, you know, it was exactly what people wanted at the time, is, is a big part of why it went so well, because... Not, yeah, a lot of them were just, you know, they're, they're fine. They, they hit the notes that they have to. And, yeah, this one is incredibly well produced. And the, you know, the fact that this is technically an independent movie, you, you can't tell that at all. You, the, the, and the budget is, you know, minuscule compared to Hollywood, but, you know, one thing that there is maybe a bit much of is, and, and it's not that this isn't done practically as well, is they use CG for, you know, blood, flies, at times even snow, which makes me wonder if, you know, it have a word for that kind of snow as well. And really, that was just what I noted the first time. This viewing, I noted that, you know, I mentioned there are hunters. Whenever a gun is fired, it actually, yeah, that's, you know, like the, the 
you know, I'm not sure all the squibs, but any that, you know, a, a number of them certainly, certainly were CG. And, you know, the, the, what's it called? Yeah, when, you know, when you fire a gun, the, the, the barrel has this, you know, it's it's plain to see that it that it's being fired. That is done with with CG and such. And you know, some of this is that it's it's a lot more convenient to do it that way. But it, yeah, on the whole, it really doesn't feel like they had to make concessions. And the. You know, it's beautifully shot. The the atmosphere builds really well using silence and isolation really well. And you know, this kind of you know it's it's both that you know, you're far away from the stress of the city, but also you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, just about anything could kill you out there. And as as a slasher, it does unfortunately also have some of the cliches and weak points of such. And you know, the the first chunk of it is basically set up about an hour into it. It really picks up the pace, but then it kind of loses and gains momentum. And yeah, it. it it really should have been 90 minutes. The there are a lot of little things that you could trim, and it probably does spend at least a little too much time building up in the early parts of the film. Now, some of the scares are jump scares, but a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them aren't and. A lot of the time, they also just they really make sure to build to the jump scare. You know, the the worst kind of jump scare is when it leads to nothing, and when it's quote unquote from nothing. It's just that something. You know, of course, a loud noise, a, a loud noise, or something suddenly jumping into frame is going to scare you. It, it's going to startle you. You know, that doesn't. You know, it's. If, if you rely too much on that, your horror piece is not going to be that compelling. But here it actually does build really well. Now, the... Now, the, the theme of revenge, you know, is, is a gripping one as well as being endemic to the Mountain Walker. But it's not explored that much. There's more of it in the last third, but the last third also has its own problems. It kind of seemed like they didn't really know what to do with the mountain walker. You know, they, they have a few ideas and they're just kind of, you know, dealt with start stop fashion. And the you know the the ending and the the conclusion to the mystery and such have problems excuse me also of the of the genre and i i do feel like they should have gone a little deeper deeper into the legend especially for the climax at the end of the day the movie just does at least one too many instances of the characters deciding to split up, some disappearing from the rest and thus also from us, you know, following a plan that's inherently flawed, refusing to accept, you know, that the, that the mountain walker can do something that he's been shown to be able to do to them already. Now, and and you know some of the you know some some items set up as being 
useful, such as you know, a radio pay off in these really distractingly unexpected ways that makes it feel like you know the that they had to hastily rewrite parts of it. And you know the yeah, the, the characters really don't have that many different ways to react to the mountain walker and as such they you know we see the same reaction several times and it doesn't get that into into depth on it but it's really never genuinely frustrating because it is so competently done the the movie is never the there's never very long in the movie where it isn't scary or really atmospheric and such. That just, yeah, you know, it's not that the movie, like, you know, not, not every single moment of the film is scary. Not all of it is meant to be. Some of it is this character stuff. But... The movie never spends very long without, you know, some scary stuff, and yeah, the character stuff you you care about. You, you know, you don't really want to see any of these kids die. And you know the yeah the the interpersonal relationships, the the character dynamics always keep you watching. And this get really this really effectively uses the perspective of the you know it's it's seen from you know Pitak the the shy one and he starts out as the outsider but he doesn't remain the outsider and yeah that works really well now. Pet peeve. Okay, you don't have to. I find it frustrating when cell phones not being used in slasher movies is you know written really poorly, and this actually has one of the least contrived eliminations of cell phones that I've seen. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.